how much resources does FinTrack have to actually go after each little $10,000 transaction? And if I'm money laundering, I'm not doing transactions in the millions to catch attention. I'm doing them at the $10,000, $15,000 limit mm -hmm. uh, in order to uh, actually get away with it. The Liberal MP grilling officials about money laundering is now at the center of serious allegations that he himself is involved in major money laundering and that the RCMP is investigating him. But late Friday night, Raj Graywall released a video denying all those allegations but announcing he was quitting the Liberal caucus, not stepping down as an MP, mind you, to deal with his admitted multi-million dollar gambling addiction. Check it out. I accumulated a personal debt in the millions of dollars. But like many addicts and people suffering from mental health issues, I started to personally borrow money solely from friends and family to continue to fuel the gambling. But now questions about him are exploding. How did he pay back so much money in gambling loans so quickly? Was he abusing his position of power? Is he a security risk? We'll talk about that and the new numbers on the massive cost of irregular or illegal asylum seekers. We're joined by Liberal MP Marco Mendocino, Conservative MP Aaron O'Toole, and the NDP's Nathan Cullen, good morning to all of you. I'm going to start with you, Nathan Cullen. You've been questioning uh, the government on all this and the transparency about this. What concerns now do you have about Mr. Graywell now that he's released this video denying anything uh, improper? Well, the story hasn't been consistent since the start. First, it started with announcement that he was quitting politics because he was ill. And then the illness was exposed as being a gambling debt. And then on and on, we see the, all the tape that you showed. Two central concerns. One is the Prime Minister was happy that he was quitting politics, so I assume the Prime Minister and the Liberals are happy, unhappy now that he's staying on as an MP, and that has a whole bunch of protections for him. That we, it's very difficult to subpoena him. He's protected by privilege of Parliament. There's a number of things that question to me why that decision was made. Second is the, and it's the one you raised, the money. How could he owe millions of dollars two weeks ago to friends and family and suddenly not owe millions of dollars on an MP's salary? That's where did the money come from? Unless he's independently wealthy, which I don't know of, maybe Marco can help us out, but that MPs owing money, the reason we have all these ethics rules, why he's under investigation, is that if we owe a great amount of debt to undisclosed sources, that can put us under undue influence. That's the point of the rules. And for all of the allegations that are now swirling around this MP, I mean, it is difficult to understand the truth from fiction and how this got this far. And nobody seems to have known anything about it in the Prime Minister's office until last Wednesday or last Sunday. Aaron O'Toole, what's your take on this? I agree with a lot of Nathan's concerns. My, my central concern is how Trudeau's office has been trying to mislead people with respect to this case. In fact, we only found out that Mr. Graywall had not resigned when my colleague Peter Kent mentioned his name in the House of Commons and was told we couldn't do that because he, he hadn't resigned. You know, Prime Minister's office had said he resigned. They thought it was appropriate. Now we're looking into it, Evan. Globe and Mail and other reports have said he was under investigation and he suddenly came off the Finance Committee a few months ago and was put on the Health Committee by the Liberals. Uh, and then quietly on a Saturday morning, yesterday, the, the whip said he's no longer in the Liberal caucus. So they've never been forthright about what's going on. My assumption is they knew several months ago that there was this large debt, there was potentially investigations, yet they've, we've, we've had to push for any information and the story keeps changing. So not only are there a number of questions about Mr. Graywall, the Prime Minister's office handling of this, in fact misleading MPs on several occasions, causes a lot of concern. Mr. Mendocino, how does the Prime Minister's office not know that one of its own MPs has multi-million dollars of gambling debts literally at the casino across the river uh, behind us? That's a potential problem, he's sitting on the Finance Committee. How do they actually say that, oh, we just found out Wednesday? Is that plausible? Yes, of course it is, because that, that is exactly with the facts of the situation. And look, I don't know what it is that's caused uh, Raj Graywell to reconsider his decision to resign. I can't get into his mind or his motivations any more than I can get into anybody else's minds uh, who would be in a similar set of circumstances. What I can tell you is that for the very first time, Raj came to the Prime Minister's office and he informed him that he was going to be stepping down as the Member of Parliament for Brampton no, East due to serious personal mental health issues. No. And it was on the expectation that that would be occurring imminently. That did not occur. And as a direct consequence, Evan, 
he has no longer part of the Liberal caucus. And lastly, let me just say that we should not gloss over the fact that this is indeed a difficult subject. We all know someone who suffers from personal mental health issues, and we should be hoping that he gets the support and the treatment so but, that he can get better. Okay. Mark, Mark, Real quick, Mark, Marco, you, you and I know many, too many cases of people in the House of Commons that are dealing with those illnesses, and we have a great deal of compassion for that, right? Whether it's addiction to alcohol or gambling. The question here is that red flags were raised when Mr. Grewal was at Finance Committee and started probing senior enforce, law enforcement officials in ways that was more than bizarre and raised red flags for the RCMP. It, w the Prime Minister's case is that nobody in the PMO, nobody in the Liberal caucus had any idea. And as I talked to a senior Liberal Evan on just Friday, he said Raj is in total denial of this stuff. Uh, my concern is that the Prime Minister's office is also in a state of denial on this. All right, I got to talk about the growing massive costs of asylum seekers. I want to switch to that issue because the Grey Wall issue is still unfolding. But the parliamentary watchdog reported in 2017 20,000 people irregularly or illegally crossed the Canadian border from the United States seeking asylum. While the numbers are going down slightly in 2018, the costs are bigger than anyone thought. $340 million a year without counting provincial and municipal costs. That adds hundreds of millions more. It could cost over a billion dollars over the next few years. Marco Mendocino, the government funds on this issue have been inadequate for provinces and municipalities. Has your government got any real solution to stem the flow of asylum seekers? Yes, we do. And first, let me uh, just acknowledge that we're aware of the PBO report and we'll be reflecting on it. But let me also set out the facts very clearly. Number one, as you pointed out, based on current trends, applicants under the refugee and asylum class are going down and will be lower than they were last year. That is in contrast to the sometimes hysteria that is raised by my conservative friends. Number two, we have invested over $170 million in the immigration system precisely to address the backlogs which went up dramatically under the last conservative government. And number three, to the extent that there are still challenges within this particular stream of immigration, they will be dealt with according to the law, right. according to the charter, and in a way that is humane. Again, in contrast to the uh, Conservatives, who were, who were held by a federal court to have an immigration policy that amounted to cruel and unusual treatment. All right, uh, I've got to go to Aaron O'Toole on that. To be frank, there's massive backlogs caused by this. I don't know what Mr. Mendocino, there are almost six-year backlogs there. What's your concern about this, Mr. O'Toole? The, my concern is both the cost, the fairness to the system, the people following the rules for proper asylum claims, and the overall immigration system, Evan. But also, this minister has known this. In fact, when Michelle Rempel started asking questions a while ago, almost two years ago, Minister Hussein was saying, everything's working fantastically well. Meanwhile, he had documents from his own department that said, whoa, minister, if this continues, it's going to cost more than $3 billion with the combined costs of processing and health care for the provinces and potential wait lists of 11 years, Evan. He's getting this information from his own department and he's telling Parliament things are working fine. We need a right. fair, compassionate, rules-based system. What we see now is pandemonium and an unfair process and a Liberal Party that attacks us for even asking questions on it. They've got zero plan and they've got to be accountable because now the P uh, PBO has also said not only is there cost, the whole concept of an okay, anchor so claim means all of these people bring in more people. Nathan so, so two things can be true at the same time. There can be a lot of xenophobia and outright racism in the discussion around this. And the system needs dramatic repair because if there's... It has to be fair and perceived to be fair. And my concern was that with the increase in costs, are other folks seeking access to Canada being delayed or denied that access? And that's something that I don't think the Liberals have gotten their arms around and need to quickly. And it's been an ongoing problem for a number of years. All right, I got to leave it there this Backlogs morning. Marco uh, Mendocino, Aaron O'Toole, and Nathan Cullen. Uh, great to have you here.